Welcome to 5th grade math with Mr. J. So in this video we are going to be multiplying decimals by powers of 10. We just got finished with multiplying whole numbers by powers of 10, so multiplying decimals by powers of 10 is a little different. If you need to go back to the basics of powers of 10, like what they are, I dropped that link in the description. And if you missed out on whole numbers, I dropped that link in the description as well. If you're ready to multiply decimals by powers of 10 though, we're going to get started here. And as you can see, I have eight problems uh, on your screen there that we will go through to get this down. So let's go to number one here. And number one, we don't have any decimals. We have nine times 10. We're just gonna review whole numbers real quick and kind of apply what we do with whole numbers to decimals. So nine times 10, we know nine times 10 is 90. And like we talked about when we multiplied whole numbers by powers of 10, we used zeros to push that nine one place to the left to make its value 90. Because we started with a nine, right? And we multiplied by 10. So we move the nine one place to the left from the ones place to the tens place using a zero to change the value of that nine. So with decimals, let's take a look at number two here. We have a three and two tenths. So we look at our 10 here and we have one zero. So that means with whole numbers, we could have put one zero on the end to push everything to the correct place. Well, let's see what happens when we do that with a decimal. Let's put one zero at the end. We get 3.20 or three and 20 hundredths, which is equivalent to three and two tenths. So we didn't change the value at all. If you multiply something by 10, you don't get the same thing. So putting zeros at the end does not work for decimals. So we need to come up with another way to push everything to the left one spot when we multiply it by 10. So what we do is we move the decimal. We move the decimal to the right one time and that will push the three to the tens place and the two to the ones place. So our answer is 32. So the key to multiplying decimals by powers of 10 is moving the decimal. And you either look at the number of zeros in your power of 10, if it's in standard form written like a regular number, or if it's an exponential form like number three, you look at the exponent. So we have 5 tenths times 10 to the second power, which means 10 times 10 or 100. So I'm going to rewrite my 5 tenths down here and move the decimal two times because I have an exponent of two. One, two. Fill this with a zero. And my answer is 50, right? You may be thinking, well, you have a zero, five, zero. Well, this zero in front of the 50 doesn't mean anything. So our product is 50. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, you move the decimal twice to the right. Well, can I move it twice to the left? If you move it twice to the left, let's try number three, twice to the left, we are decreasing our number in value. We would get five thousandths, okay? We're multiplying something by 10 to the second power or 100. So we want to increase the value. So we move the decimal twice to the right. Okay. And when we get to division, you actually move it to the left. So let's go to number four here. We have 22 and 57 hundredths times a thousand. So we check our number of zeros. We have three. That means we need to move everything three spots to the left to put them into the correct place value. So one, two, three. Decimal here, fill with a zero. So our answer is 22,570. And think about it. If you were to round this to the nearest whole number, it would be 23. And 23 times a thousand is 23,000. We get an answer that is close to 23,000. We have a reasonable answer. So you move the decimal the correct way. 
if you were to accidentally move it to the left, you would get a very small number and value, very far away from 22,570. It would not be a reasonable answer. So always double check that you move the decimal the correct way. Now number five, 67 is a whole number. So I threw one in from the whole numbers just to show you um, a couple things. First, we could use our zero method two zeros here so we put two zeros on the end to push everything to the correct place value and we get 6700. I also want to show you the decimal method with this because where does the decimal go for a whole number? It comes after. So we could write 67 like this and 100 has two zeros so we can move the decimal two times. One, two fill with zeros, look what, look what we get. We get the same thing, okay? 6,700 for that one. Number six, one and four tenths times 10 to the second. We have an exponent of two, so move the decimal twice. One, two, fill with a zero. Our answer is 140. I always suggest with these problems, you rewrite your decimal underneath Take your pencil and actually draw out the movements and then rewrite your answer without that arrow and movement underneath. So write the 140 up there. All right, number seven. Five tenths times 1,000. Three zeros, that means we move the decimal three times to push the five to the correct place value. One, two, three. Fill with zeros. You don't want to circle this as your final answer. You don't want that line underneath, right? You want to rewrite the answer in standard form, nice and clean number here, 500. And then number eight, seven and 22 hundredths. How many times do you think you move the decimal? Hopefully you are thinking three because our exponent is three. The exponent or number of zeros will tell you how many times to move the decimal. So one, two, three, fill with a zero, we get 7,220. 7, so that's multiplying decimals by powers of 10. You move the decimal in order to push everything to the correct place value. Kind of like when we did whole numbers, we put zeros on the end as placeholder, placeholders to push everything to the correct place value. So after those eight problems, hopefully you are ready to try some on your own. I dropped the link to the mastery check below. I will see you over at the mastery check to see if you have it down. Thanks for watching.